Welcome back, traders and investors. We have Darren Heitner on the line, and he is the founder and CEO of Dynasty Dealings and professor of sports management at Indiana University. How are you doing this morning, Darren? I'm doing well. How are you? We're doing good. Well, what a great time to have an expert on like you uh, regarding the goings-on in the NFL here. Uh, I guess we could start with the Ray Rice thing. And, uh, you know, my, you know, my initial take is that, you know, what happened in the video, okay, is that any different than what the NFL knew that he did to his wife? I mean, how, where do they draw the line on something like that and go from a two-day suspension until indefinite suspension? Right. I think that's the key. And what you had yesterday was the NFL Players Association, which represents all the players in the NFL, filing an appeal based on Roger Goodell what they say, arbitrarily going from a two-game suspension to an indefinite suspension. Um, And the premise of that appeal really falls on whether or not Roger Goodell and the NFL offices received some sort of information from that video or other sources that we're unaware of that would have provided enhanced or information that was not in the possession of the NFL prior to that point in time and when the two-game suspension was initially implemented. Uh, The NFL Players Association is taking the position that absolutely nothing was discovered that was not already known by the NFL, and that Roger Goodell had previously met with Ray Rice, and Ray Rice was very forthcoming in explaining exactly what happened. Now, you have a video which obviously paints a much more complete picture than words will, but was there really any information that was discovered that was not known in the NFLPA's position is that's not the case. And that under labor law, you can't punish somebody twice for the same exact thing that occurred as long as you do about it. Habeas corpus. And uh, a lot of people are calling for Goodell's head over this. Uh, Do you see uh, any chance of that happening? It's very, very difficult because Roger Goodell is really put in his position by the owners of the NFL organizations. And we're at a point of time where the NFL has extreme prosperity. We're talking about a league that's worth in excess of $10 billion. Really, you know, baseball being talked about as America's pastime, the National Football League is what's the most successful league of all the professional sports in America today. So I think from a business perspective, the the individual owners of the various teams are very happy with the job that Roger Goodell is doing. And and from my point of view, I don't see him losing his job over all this. Now, certainly, there there is there has been an investigator appointed to really look into the entire process uh, whereby Roger Goodell was afforded information about Ray Rice and whether or not he was arbitrary in his, in his decision making. But that said, I think unless there's some sort of real smoking gun and and some information that comes out that shows he was just reckless in the way that he handled the situation, I think his position is safe. And, uh, you know, you talk you talk about the markets and you talk about, you know, excess value and the top of the markets. And I mean, you know, the Buffalo Bills just changed hands for, you know, an exorbitant price tag. I mean, you see these things that are going on with Adrian Peterson and and Ray Rice. uh, Boy, boy, I mean, do, do, do you kind of feel like there's we're hitting a little bit of a top? I mean, how, how much how much higher can the value of these franchises go? I guess it depends on how much the networks will, are willing to pay them. But, uh, boy, oh, boy, I mean, can it just keep going? It's just, it's just going to shrug this off and just keep moving higher? Right, right. You made a good point. I mean, the, the revenues are largely – impacted by these major television deals that are continuing to be brokered um, and the expansion of you know the NFL network, et cetera. So the, the type of uh, content that's being created by the league itself and then disseminated among other networks and other publications. Uh, I don't think that these individual incidents will play much of a role. Now, that said, if, if, if this continues to be an issue and there are more and more players – uh, that are accused and or convicted of these types of egregious crimes, it could certainly have a very heavy effect on the public relations for the NFL and the image that, that is conveyed to fans. And 
if you do continue to have sponsors pulling out of their relationships with teams and the NFL, and that, that could end up having a real impact on the league. Um, but at this point in time, you know, with these rare incidents and, and really a relatively small number of players that are being accused of these criminal acts, I don't really see it having a major effect, if any effect at all, on the bottom line for the NFL. The vast majority of players, and I work with many of them from a legal standpoint, are amazing individuals that not only um, are, are not committing these types of criminal acts, but do a lot of good for the community, are very philanthropic. And, and so I don't think that, that overall these types of issues, if, if, as long as they are at a minimum and are, are kept at bay, will have a major effect on, on the bottom line. So you don't think like Bud or FedEx or Campbell's Soups that have all released statements on this are actually going to actually take the step to, uh, to drop any of their sponsorship? You know, we, we've had a few companies, including Anheuser-Busch, probably uh, most proactively come out and say we're keeping a close eye on how the NFL handles these types of situations, Ray Rice, Adrian Peterson, etc. cetera. Um, but unless there's drastic action and action taken across the board, similar to what could have happened with the Los Angeles Clippers when you had the whole Donald Sterling affair, you know, until that point of time, I don't think that there's a major, major concern. And certainly the NFL office in, in New York is, is communicating frequently and very openly with the sponsors and making sure that they're apprised of exactly what's going on. Um, you know, they help generate a lot of revenue for the NFL. So the NFL has to really uh, take heed to, to their positions on, on these types of matters. Um, it's not just about public relations with the general public. So, but, but again, I think that it's clear what the stance is of many of these sponsors, which is, you know, something needs to be done. The NFL needs to take a position, but we're not ready to completely disassociate ourselves with the most successful league in the country at this point in time. And then you go, you go from the, you know, domestic abuse to child abuse with the, uh, with the Adrian Peterson thing. I mean, uh, do you think that uh, the Vikings, uh, they suspend him for one game and he's right back on the field next week. Uh, do you think that that mm-hmm. situation is going to be handled correctly? Well, what's really interesting is that you've had a complete reversal within a span of, tw- of 48 hours. So, <laughs> You know, yesterday the Vikings took the position that Adrian Peterson would be coming back to the team after a one-game suspension because of quote-unquote due process reasons, that the team, and in particular the owners, were willing to wait until the criminal justice process runs its course and there's some determination as to whether or not Adrian Peterson violated any law. Well, now you have the Vikings coming back and, and this early, early this morning and saying that they've decided to deactivate Adrian Peterson indefinitely. Um, so, you know, you, you've seen a, a, an entire reversal, of course, and it sort of falls in line with the position that Roger Goodell has taken from a league standpoint, which is we're not going to you know, do process or not, whether or not it's pending in the, in the criminal uh, judicial process, we're not going to just let players continue to, to play out until there's a determination that's made. And so you go, you have the Vikings who at first were taking a very sit back and relax approach to now being very proactive and suspending him indefinitely. Oh my gosh. They are flip flopping. Unbelievable on that. That is, uh, you know, now they, now they suspend them again, perhaps bowing to a little bit of, uh, of, uh, public pressure there. Uh, last time we were on, we, you talked about, you know, individual athletes, uh, kind of setting themselves up like as a stock and, uh, you know, based on the value of their, their holdings or their endorsements and stuff. And I, I think you mentioned Vernon Davis is uh, one of the players that jumped into that. Uh, do you have any updates on that? You know, not, not much to report other than the fact that the stock itself has really not seen all that much activity. There's not a lot of variation in terms of its valuation. Um, I think over 52 weeks, it's probably moved up and down about $3 uh, total from, you know, not about ten dollars to 
to um, to thirteen dollars. Um, you know, you've got a player. The, the way that the stock works is that it's a tracking stock, and it's supposed to track not only his performance on the field and his contract that he receives from the 49ers or any other NFL team, but also his quote unquote brand off the field. So what, what's he doing with regards to endorsement opportunities, et cetera? You, you can't expect for an NFL player or any professional athlete to really have that much going on in terms of off field activity, especially during the, the regular season or the playoffs it's very different than a company which is reporting different types of news on a daily basis. So I wouldn't expect a lot of volume or a lot of variation with these types of tracking stocks. I think it's more along the lines of a, of a hold it for some time. If you like the player, if you like the team, if you want to feel as though you're a part of his success on and off the field, but it's not something that's going to have a lot of action on a daily basis. Who's making the market in that? Uh, it's a company called Fantex. Um, so it's it's a brokerage service that has basically provided an upfront payment to athletes, including Vernon Davis, for a piece of what I mentioned is their quote unquote brand. Okay. Um, and and so you, an individual who's getting stock in Vernon Davis isn't actually paying Vernon Davis directly, but instead uh, is part of this Fantex exchange. Okay, so like every time he makes a touchdown catch, people like don't bid it <laughs> off, and uh, oh no, he fumbles, and then they dump right. his stock. I, I you guess. may be gaining fantasy points, but you're not having you're likely not having any influence on your uh, stock price. Okay, all right. So just uh, you know, final thoughts on you know everything that's been going on. It just I, I'm getting a feeling from you that you know there's a lot of bad news out there. Uh, but, you know, time heals all wounds here. And, uh, you know, they're making examples of these, these few Greg Hardy situations, something we didn't touch uh, touch about. But uh, you just kinda, you're just kind of looking for this just to blow over and uh, the NFL just to continue its dominance and uh, continue to be just a money-making machine. Well, I don't necessarily think that this is just going to blow over. I, I do believe that the NFL... Um, that, that people want the NFL to succeed because they, the general public enjoys watching professional football games. I mean, you can look at the big concussion crisis as well, where there have been numerous lawsuits filed against the NFL for what is what former players say are negligent acts and not informing the players about the risks that are that they're incurring while they're on the field. But the NFL has and will will survive that battle along with these issues. I, I really believe that. That said. You know, the league office is going to have to take a position on these matters and not arbitrarily enforce certain types of rules and policies. What's happened recently with Ray Rice and Adrian Peterson cannot continue to happen. They need to take a stance on domestic domestic violence, have a policy in place, and adhere to that policy. This type of arbitrary action if it continues, can become a serious problem for the NFL. And uh, one final thing I wanted to ask you about, and, uh, you know, I watch sporting events, and I'm watching the tickers, and it just seems like on every Monday or Tuesday, you just see all these NFL players just with these severe season-ending injuries, you know, necks, backs, arms, legs, concussions, and whatnot. Is it is it just that because of the media and because of the TV, I'm that I'm seeing it, and that it occurred, you know, just as much, you know, in the '60s and the '70s and the '80s when there wasn't a, that amount of media coverage? Because to me, I'm a huge college football fan, and I just love the, you know, the fanfare and everything. And uh, to me, I mean, it's just such a such a brutal sport and just such a risk of injury to your players and your team. You know what? You know, Tom Brady goes down for the uh, for the Patriots and, you know, there goes their season. Uh, do you think the incidence of injury is the same as it always was? Or, you know, with all the uh, faster, stronger, more roided out players uh, that you're having more injuries? Well, I think it's obvious that the sport itself is inherently brutal. I mean, it, it calls for hits. It calls for a mild level of violence. Um, but I, I do believe that probably the biggest reason for any increase in injury or gravity of injury is just simply the fact that players are bigger and stronger today. 
And when you have those types of blows to the body, it's more impactful, even for the player sustaining the blow, who himself is is much stronger probably than in in years past and decades past. But still, uh, the force driving, you know, the the player who's hitting another is just, the impact is so strong. And I'm not a scientist, and I don't hold myself out as one, so I can't really provide detailed information regarding that. But those individuals I've spoken to, that's typically uh, the justification that they provide when discussing these, this type of issue. Um, but, you know, so so it is part of the game. What you see is the NFL sort of reacting to that. And, and for anybody who's watched the first couple of weeks of the NFL, probably noticed that there have been, uh, there's been a, a serious increase in number of penalties uh, against the defense, sometimes for small ticky-tack penalties, but also for hits to certain areas of the body, including the head, particularly with the quarterback, to try to prevent those types of serious uh, injuries, um, particularly concussions. So the NFL is doing what it can without completely changing the game. Um, and I think that's important because it is a game that, that many of us crave. Um, you don't want to completely change it, but you also want to do what's in the best interest of the players to allow them to have you know, successful and, and enjoyable lives in retirement. Okay, we've had Darren Heitner on the line, founder and CEO of Dynasty Steel, uh, Dealings, as well as professor of sports management, management at Indiana University. Darren, thanks for coming on. Give us an uh, update on what's going on, and uh, certainly like to have you on again. Thank you. Take care.